This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by David Shea, CTO, Kraken Robotics, to discuss the technical trends that are driving the subsea market. So Dave, I know that most people watching this and reading this know the Kraken Robotics name, but I'd appreciate it if you could give us a buy the numbers look at Kraken today, something that gives our readers, our viewers, a size and shape to the, your business reach using the metrics of your choice. Absolutely, and thanks for having me, Greg. Um, so Kraken is a relatively young company. We started the business in 2012, uh, headquartered in St. John's, Newfoundland, which is still our headquarters today. Uh, back then, we only had six employees, uh, so myself and Carl Kenny, our founder, and, uh, and a handful of other folks. Since then, we've grown a lot, both uh, locally within St. John's and Newfoundland, but also globally. We're about 250 people worldwide. We have offices in Nova Scotia, where I am today, in Scotland, in Germany, in Brazil, in Denmark, uh, and in the USA. So we've grown substantially uh, as part of that growth and that strategy and the history. In the beginning, we were just building sonar systems. We were putting those sonar systems onto other people's underwater vehicles. Uh, since then, we started moving up market into building other components for underwater vehicles. Uh, we have pressure tolerant batteries now coming out of our facilities in Germany. We have uh, underwater laser scanners and we have launch and recovery systems. Uh, and so as we started moving up market, we came to deliver complete solutions. So mine hunting and mine countermeasures is still our bread and butter. We deliver a complete mine hunting solution for NATO navies around the world. Uh, we deliver systems to the Canadian Navy called the Remote Mine Hunting Disposal System. Uh, and all of those, that growth and that delivery uh, has helped us to, to actually diversify our business as well, moving beyond just delivering products and delivering tools, but also delivering services. So we actually have been running a robotics as a service business for the past few years, which helps to support the commercial uh, industry. So things like offshore wind, where they may not be looking to acquire a bunch of equipment and they may not be looking to manage the life cycle of that equipment. They just have a job that needs to be done. They need a pipeline to be surveyed or a cable route, or they want some data acquired. We can go in, get the data, deliver the data product and get out as quickly as possible. So all that growth has really been reflected in our revenue numbers. Uh, our 2023 revenues were about 70 million. Uh, Kraken is publicly traded, so all these numbers are, are of course, publicly available. Um, that was about a 70% growth over 2022. And we've seen a pretty significant and steady growth uh, every year since inception. Uh, and we're anticipating doing somewhere between 90 and 100 million uh, this year in 2024. You know, as I, as I think you will attest or could attest, you know, this is a transcendent time across maritime and the subsea space with uh, automation and autonomy digitalization and fuel and energy transition. Uh, when you look at your product and service lineup and try to serve your clients today while envisioning what the market will look like in the coming decade, what are the prevailing trends and technologies that you see today that are driving your business, not only today, but also that will fuel your future? So a continued improvement on size, weight, and power or swap uh, is one of the big drivers across the industry. It's been that way for a long time, trying to increase the power density of the battery solutions that we're delivering, trying to lower the, uh, the weight of the sensors that we're building, uh, trying to make things more compact. We're seeing underwater vehicles both getting much bigger in terms of XL vehicle programs, which require more batteries and more power. We also see vehicles getting much smaller. There's still a continuous focus on lower cost platforms and truly attritable platforms where you can afford to lose vehicles that you put in the water. Uh, as we know, the ocean is a challenging environment. It's a, a, a highly uh, complex environment. Every time you put something in the water, there's a risk that it might not come back. So ensuring that's not your, your singular multi-million dollar asset, but actually being able to afford to put out multiple platforms. Um, on the sensing side and the synthetic aperture sonar in particular, which is really our, our core technology, we're focused on uh, higher quality, higher resolution, longer ranges, but also achieving a lower cost. Our target has always been to, uh, to compete against existing legacy technologies. 
uh, and educating customers about the benefits of SaaS and showing them that synthetic aperture is not just reserved for these very expensive, very exotic military applications, but that it's truly an affordable tool to give you a higher area coverage at a lower cost for even commercial applications. Uh, and of course, as everyone in this industry, I'm sure is talking about as with many industries, AI, autonomy, artificial intelligence, not just getting better data, not just getting more data, not just running systems for longer, but what do you do with all that data? How do you process it? How do you perceive it? Uh, both things like automated target recognition, being able to comb through a large volume of data and automatically pick out objects of interest, uh, but also improving quality control, automated quality metrics, allowing the robots themselves that we put in the water to make decisions to say, while it's on mission, hey, there was a shadow in this region, or hey, there was a thermocline, I should go back and retask myself to get a better picture. That's truly where we're trying to drive these systems and have that achieve that sensor-driven autonomy. Can you discuss one recent or ongoing project that you believe highlights the capabilities of Kraken Robotics? So one recent example that really highlights some of the capabilities that we have uh, is a project that we just announced publicly uh, about a month or so ago. Uh, we wrapped up a, a seabed survey for a defense customer uh, in, uh, in Australia, where we were actually using our technology, using our vehicles, using our personnel, and operating those systems as a service, not to replace what that defense customer was doing with their own sailors and their own equipment, but to augment those capabilities. So we were there doing port and harbor security, doing route survey, using this technology to actually provide critical information in a very timely manner, and showing them that you don't have to go through a long, complicated acquisition process and train up all your sailors. That's a customer that actually owns some of our technology already, but that technology was deployed in another mission. And they said, well, can you come in and help us here? Can you augment what we're doing? So we were able to bring our people in, bring our systems in. We operated for about six months, round the clock, nonstop operations there, collecting data, passing that data off to the customer on regular intervals. And once the job was done, we packed up all our kit, shipped it back up to our main facility in Canada, where we clean it and polish it and get it ready for the next mission. You know, when you look at the region where you live and work, um, what do you count as the leading benefits of emerging from this world-class cluster? So the one of the things that everybody talks about when they travel to Newfoundland and Labrador and when they travel to the east coast of Canada is the people. The connections that people build, the relationships that they have, they talk about how friendly the locals are, how warm and welcoming they are, that sense of community. From a technology perspective and a tech industry perspective, we have a similar value. It's truly the people behind the companies, the people behind the technologies, the people behind the products, and that capacity for collaboration that we have. Now, especially on the East Coast, where we have one of the harshest environments in the world, being the Atlantic Ocean. Canada is a country surrounded by three oceans. We have the longest coastline in the world. Uh, and yet we have this concentration of technology happening out here on this rock in the middle of the North Atlantic here. Part of that is because the people are, are truly resilient and innovative to try and solve some of these difficult problems partly because we have this fantastic testing environment that if you can make something work there in the North Atlantic off of Newfoundland, you can make it work anywhere. Uh, but truly uh, bringing those, those people together and being able to get the best of the best working on some of these world-class problems and then being able to export those problems across the globe. And again, your, your Kraken Robotics is continual innovation. Um, what can our viewers and our readers expect from Kraken Robotics uh, through the rest of this year and into 2025? I think readers can expect to see a continuous growth in Kraken across all of our business areas. Uh, we're growing in terms of volume of both sales and products that we're delivering, but also growing in terms of the technology that we're developing. There's a lot of really exciting new tools. We've got some next generation uh, technologies that we've been working on. Kraken's mantra for 
the years since we started has always been innovate or die. We've taken that quite seriously. We're always pushing the envelope in everything that we're doing. Uh, but we're also going to see growth across our services. We're going to see growth across the types of services that we're able to offer our customers and the areas in which we're supporting our customers as we grow our business and our personnel across the globe. We're starting to recruit people in strategic locations where we have customers so that we can provide on the ground support right in their countries and in their locations. So you'll see growth uh, across everything that we're doing. Uh, as we know, the, the world is a, a very big place. There's a lot of challenges happening right now. Uh, Kraken is very lucky to be supporting both our own navies and the countries that we uh, operate in, but also navies across the globe to help uh, secure and protect uh, our oceans and to help explore uh, our oceans as well.